Good morning, church. Today we're going to look at Matthew chapter 18. At the very beginning, it says this, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now, of course, this is a question we all want to ask. We all want to say, okay, Jesus, how do we become the great people that we already think we are? Or maybe you don't think you're all that great, but this answer from Jesus, I think, is going to give you some comfort or maybe some challenge. Let's see. Verse 2. He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. So that last line, whoever welcomes a child like this in Jesus' name welcomes Jesus. This is the point where I plug our children's program in our church. Now, granted, we aren't doing a children's program right now at our church building because we're not doing much of anything at our church building. But this is the time where I'm supposed to remind you that Jesus himself said, if you welcome a little child, you've welcomed Jesus. So, you know, when we get back into the church thing, we're going to take volunteers, and I'd like you to sign up for our Kidopolis program. But this is not just the time that I plug our Kidopolis program. This is also the time where I'm supposed to plug your own parenting, that you have an opportunity, especially you who have kids. You're all cooped up together in the house, and this is your chance to be real, authentic, deep, full parents with your kids. Like, how you treat your kids now in the weirdness of this circumstance is going to shape how your kids view faith for, for decades, for the rest of their life, really. Because right now, you are determining how your kids feel when they think, is church just a thing we go to, or is faith a life that we live? This is the time where I should plug your parenting skills. But... It's also the time where I plug the point that Jesus was making. Jesus' main point was humility. If you want greatness, what you need is humility. Jesus says, I want you to be like little children. Not, not mindless infants. Not uh, annoying toddlers. Uh, Jesus isn't referring to the behaviors of little children. He's referring to the fact that little children have nothing of their own. They're completely dependent. And Jesus wants you to be a person who's dependent. Now, this is a time in our lives where we are all faced with uncertainty and in some respects hopelessness about this length of time that we are going to be in quarantine or lockdown or whatever it is. But I want to let you know that Jesus likes it when you feel helpless. Jesus likes it when you feel needy. Jesus likes it when you recognize he has what you need. Now, he continues on in the rest of this section that we're going to be looking at to play off this a little bit more. And it sounds like it's going in a different direction. But just stay with me here. In verse 6. It says, if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. This is one of those passages that throws us off because we don't know if Jesus is being literal or not. Well, actually, I don't think this passage is really about maiming yourself. Frankly, the truth of the matter is, if I could conquer sin in my life by cutting off my hand, then yes, I should cut off my hand. But the truth of the matter is, I don't solve the sin problem by getting rid of one part of my body. I don't solve the sin problem by getting rid of this hand. I can only solve the sin problem by doing something in my heart. 
So that's why I don't think Jesus is talking about really maiming yourself. Instead, remember this is in the context of the little child thing and the humility thing and the disciples asking how to be great. I think the point that Jesus is making here is that stumbling is so dangerous. Causing someone else to stumble is incredibly dangerous, and anything that causes you to stumble is incredibly dangerous. You know, I'm imagining that some of you right now in this quarantine lockdown situation are feeling like you're stumbling a little bit. And you're in that place where your own sort of fear or anxiety or helplessness or maybe even hopelessness is causing you to stumble into a lack of faith. Jesus says that stumbling happens. He says that the things that cause people to stumble happen. But woe if you're the person who's caused it. Now, of course, you didn't cause the coronavirus, and you're not causing any of the problems or the worries. I'm just saying that right now, at this point, I want you to pay attention to the fact that Jesus thinks that stumbling is really, really bad, really dangerous. And so you don't want to stumble. I don't want you to stumble. But let's keep reading because I think it gets to a place that will encourage you. It says in verse 10, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. Now, this also seems like it's out of nowhere. It's Jesus is now back to talking about children. He was talking about stumbling and cutting off your hand or gouging out your eyes. And now he's talking about children again. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. You can come up with a lot of curious thoughts about what does that mean? Do we all have personal angels in heaven? It can be really confusing, but we don't really get the answer until we see the next section. Look at verse 12. Jesus says, What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he's happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Again, this is one of these passages that we're familiar with. We know the story about the shepherd with the 99 sheep and that uh, the 100 are fine and then one wanders away and so now he's got to leave the 99 behind and go after this one. We've heard that story before. You've probably heard that story before. But Jesus is telling the story again in verse 14. He says, in the same way, your father is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. How do we understand all these different pieces? Well, I want to put them together for you right now. You see, the one thing that is true from beginning to end of this section that we've looked at is that no matter who you are, God is paying attention to you. No matter who you are, God loves you. No matter who you are, God is watching out for you. No matter who you are, God loves you. You don't have to be something great. You don't have to be something significant. You can be a little child and God loves you. God has angels that are assigned to pay attention to the things of this world. And we don't know the details of all that. We just know it's true. God cares for you. But notice this last little thing. God doesn't just care for your physical health. He cares for your soul. In the same way your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. God doesn't just care for your physical health. He cares for your soul. So right now, in this situation we're in, right now, in this whole coronavirus mess, I want to encourage you to do three things. I want you, one, to be humble. Recognize your need for God and embrace it. Number two, be aware of others. 
You don't know exactly what their situation is. You don't exactly know who they are. You don't exactly know what's going on. You might think they're insignificant. Maybe they don't have a lot going on for them. Maybe they're in a humble place. Maybe they're a little child, but be aware of them. And number three, be incredibly confident in God's care. I want you to be humble. I want you to be aware of the people around you. And I want you to be confident of God's care because he loves you. He's concerned about you. He's paying attention to you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I ask that you today be with us and help us to recognize your grace and compassion and care in our lives. Guide us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day today.